Hello everyone, um, I bought this new car about a month ago. When I was searching online for details on technologies in it, how good the car is, the majority of videos were looking at how the car looks, would list the specs, but no one looked deeper into um, the tech, even though the 2016 model of this car had exactly the same technology as the 2017 one. Unfortunately, they lack in the videos lacked in their um, uh, comprehensive view of um, the different technologies and functions in this car. Uh, so I thought, why not uh, dive a bit in details um, to give um, future owners or people who are researching for cars a bit of um, um, insight on how, of my opinion, and how this car runs. Uh, so today we will focus on what's on the steering wheel, all the buttons, and then in another episode I will uh, drive the car and explain and actually show you how the different features work especially how accurate and how relaxing the Honda's autopilot which they call Honda sensing is um, uh, in this car so this the car is now is an off position I will turn it on so just like any other car brake and button okay so you'll see here there's a small screen in the middle which is pretty informative um, and the double screen system we will go into more details in another episode here but to explain what's on the steering wheel there is on the right hand side the main button which um, I think they could have uh, renamed it to uh, a more easier or a more logical name um, as here it does when you turn it when you press it it turns on and off the adaptive cruise control and the lane keeping assist um, and this side technically here on the top co controls the um, uh, autopilot functions so the on and off now it's on so as you can see here ACC and LCAS this button here controls uh, the speed so now because we're parked it says speed too low but anytime you're over 40 kilometers an hour you can press the set button and make sure your ha your foot is not on the brake and it would then uh, start adaptive cruise control um, plus and minus would then um, uh, increase or uh, decrease the speeds and in increments of 10 if you long press and a short press and in an increment of one kilometer an hour this here the right button on the circular um, controller here would modify the desired distance between you and um, the cars in front of you and you can set it to four car lengths three two or one I usually keep it at uh, two I find four um, too safe and uh, it would actually get um, you're very far from the car in front of you and in in day-to-day -day driving it's not something you'd like to be uh, so and one would be pretty short or pretty uh, low safety margin when the car is driving itself because you do need some time to react if the system uh, um, doesn't do its job as you'd expect it to so two car lengths is usually what I what I keep it on turning this on this button here would turn on the lane keeping assist so you can see in the screen um, the lanes and if the lanes are filled with uh, white color, that means the car can detect the lanes and is able to keep you in the lane. There is a voice prompt every time it detects a car and every time it uh, uh, a car goes out of range. And the same goes for the lane keeping. If there is a car, if the, the lanes are detected, it would beep when the la lanes go out of focus or the lanes disappear. Um, the car would also be to tell you uh, to take control that's the beep should be turned on in the uh, settings of the autopilot or the Honda sensing as Honda calls it mm, the car also has uh, when it comes to the autopilot feature has lane departure you have to turn it manually here so the green would mean it's on you would have traction control that's automatically on and you have the collision mitigation braking system so I think they they could have all coupled it in the same system but they gave the user the chance to turn individual things um, through different buttons I mean 
turning on the lane keeping um, there's this could be like a double press or a long press and it would use it would um, do the function of the lane departure here um, but I mean I, I don't mind it the other feature if you would like the car to be less smart and turn off the adaptive cru cru cruise control and go back to what's a normal cruise control is you just long press the adaptive cruise control and the car goes into a normal cruise mode and it clearly says that so you're not um, doing the mistake of thinking the car is actually uh, driving itself while it's not okay so the other set of button on the right side here is just controlling the screen in front of you so your average speed elapsed time or life and then vehicle settings and vehicle settings you can um, uh, reset the TPMS system uh, driver assistance setup would just let you do sm small modifications to how the car reacts so forward collision warning distance uh, I set it always too long. I always prefer uh, more time to react. So, uh, but you could choose between long setup, um, long normal, or short. I keep it at long. Um, ACC pre-running car detect beep. Yes. So that's that's the beep I was talking to you about that uh, gives you uh, notifies you when there's a car um, in in range. And then ECC display speed unit, so kilometers per hour because we're in Canada. And then road departure settings. So the road departure, I do always try to uh, set it to wide. Also, just in this for the same reason as I do with um, um, the adaptive cruise control. I just feel like I I should be um, a more careful driver when autopilot is running because I would need. A bit more time to react lane keeping assist suspend uh, suspend uh, beep that's the beep you heard when I turned it off exit meter setup keyless uh, access setup that's normal lighting setup door setup is what's in any other car and the maintenance reset if the car has any uh, info you exit here going to the left side this would control the um, upper screen here the button uh, here the pages and uh, could, you could scroll between music, uh, information which shows you the clock, and information, music, and if your Android Auto or Apple CarPlay is connected, even though this car does not have a built-in GPS system, which I don't mind because I, I prefer Google Maps, Android Auto gives you that, and you will get your navigation um, data on the upper screen um, if you're busy doing other stuff on this screen. This is the volume up, volume down, and uh, navigation through um, tracks. Source changes the source from FM, AM, Bluetooth, audio apps, the internet apps. And if your Android Auto is connected, uh, you would see that choice there too. Uh, the menu just gives you small modifications here. So play pause. That's something I would never use. And this menu only appears when your uh, car is parked. Speed dial, call history, call history, redial, and display settings would take you to brightness, contrast, and black level. I've, I've always felt the need to keep it at 10 brightness, which is the maximum. Yes, it is the maximum. Um, uh, at night, it does detect that it's night and dims the screen. Uh, actually, it, if you're in Android Auto or Apple CarPlay, it, the map turns into night, night mode too. Uh, these buttons here is answering your phone call, returning or hanging up and then the voice commands. The voice commands of Honda are terrible. You should not depend on them. They, you will not be able to depend on them because the voice re recognition is pretty bad. I expected that when I bought the car, so that wasn't an issue. Um, I only use um, uh, OK Google, which is Google, Google commands, uh, voice commands, and um, uh, Siri if an iPhone is connected. Um, they are miles ahead in terms of recognition and technology um, the car also has the manual shifters and uh, which I rarely use long pressing the manual shifter would reset it into drive mode when you're using it um, lights auto just like any other car so I won't indulge in this uh, windshield wiper econ mode so that just limits the um, the power the car gets when you try to speed I mean it's a bit slower to accelerate and it also limits um, 
the compressor for the um, HVAC system. That's pretty much for what we have here. I will, this is the first video, so I'm just getting myself um, used to talking to a camera. And then we will um, dig deeper into the other technology. I will connect the phone to Android Auto next time and uh, get you to, um, to see how that runs. It's pretty good. I like the car. Um, I've only did 1,600 kilometers on it. Uh, I've enjoyed it. Um, yep, that's pretty much it for now. Let me know if you have any questions. And um, thank you for watching.